Mountain fiddler Roger Howell's beautiful ballads can be heard all along Banjo Road outside the close-knit community of Mars Hill. The fact he's recognized by his peers as a master musician is only half the story. As a child, the art of traditional mountain music was passed down to him when playing on the porches and in living rooms of musicians who came before. This is when he developed a lifelong passion for music preservation. Now, by recording these tunes and sharing them with future generations, his hope is to make sure this part of our heritage is never lost. Banjo Branch is, is in the central part of Madison County, right just north of Mars Hill, a little college town. And we're in the rough, getting into the rough edge of the Walnut Mountain chain, and it's, it's, it gets a little rugged. Roger is someone who, he grew up in this, this community, and um, through the influence of friends and neighbors, came into um, the music world. That's such a rich, rich world in this area. First thing I heard when I come up here was a banjo. Prettiest music I'd ever heard. Never heard, I don't reckon I heard a banjo on TV or what have you, but never had seen one up close. And I heard her, this lady playing when you and I were young Maggie. Her husband had just passed away and I remember very plainly hearing her sitting crying on the porch trying to sing that song. And it was a pretty, pretty uh, touching thing. I guess the thing that strikes me about Roger that I noticed early on in our friendship, no matter what he's doing, he wants to get to the root of it, what's behind it, what the story is underneath it, whether that's the person that played this tune. He wants to know the, the history of the place where they came from, so he's like this walking historian. Well, when you think of fiddles, you, you generally kind of think of two major styles. You think of the old time, and you think of bluegrass. I don't think Roger really fits either one. I think if you were to ask, Roger, he would describe his fiddling as Appalachian fiddle tunes. I've been scratching around at it for several years. I had learned previously just without really watching anybody. I just, basically what I was picking up off of TV, watching some of the old country music shows. And it was a lot of little short notes. I've learned later and since then that the longbow is the way to go. If you get more notes, it's easier on the fiddler. And if you're playing for a dance band, if you're in a dance band, it's really easy. If you're, if you're putting all them little notes in like this, your arm is gonna fall off when you're trying to play for a dance, so it's just economical way to play and the best way to play. I noticed uh, some of the old people that I had been watching over the years and, and learning from, they were getting to the point they couldn't play anymore. And I got thinking, what happens when these people are gone? I mean, if somebody doesn't sit down and learn these tunes or at least record them or preserve their particular music, what's going to happen to them? And I just decided that if, if I don't do it, who's going to do it? So I kind of went around and while I was, some of them were still able, I would try to learn their tunes and I put a, little, a few of them on tape. I wish I'd have done a lot more now. I started with my little home recorder, a little four track. I'd had a lot of tunes in my head and I sat down and done I don't know, a couple of hundred. It took me a while, but I, I did that. And then it, it just took on its own life, I guess you could say. I've, I've, I've decided, well, this, this is good. And I kept thinking of more tunes. And so I gave them to the, uh, the uh, university down here. And they made copies and sent them to, I think, seven or eight other universities all over the Southeast. And so he's already given us 532 fiddle tunes. And I understand that he's actually got more, and I think that he's got the number 600 in his sights to, to give us before it's over with. We would lose this music if we didn't have people like Rogers to preserve it for us. It would be gone. 
We talk a lot in this area about the importance of tradition and the music, but when you see someone like Roger Howell, who has this permeate every aspect of his life, he spends all this time on his own time recording these tunes to share with future generations. He goes to every jam and gathering he can um, find in the area. He has been here many times on this campus. I think you realize that when you see this deep commitment, what, what this tradition truly means for Western North Carolina. It's, it's a very good feeling to know that somebody cares enough and is interested enough in the music. I'm, I feel proud to be part of putting it to where people can gain access to it. If somebody wants to figure out, well, how does that old North Carolina breakdown go or whatever, they just go and pull it up and listen to it. That's, that's a good thing, whether if you hunt it down online on the internet, it would be almost impossible to find it. But if you want the Western North Carolina version, go right down there and pick it up. That, that's, that's a good feeling.